Do you ever get that feeling that whatever you do in terms of retirement and your super fund, you'll never have enough? We want to have our cappuccinos. We want to potentially travel. So therefore, I think you need more money today than what you did before. Every now and then when you get your statement, maybe you take a look with trepidation at your balance because you have no idea of if it's going to be up or down this time. Worst of all, even if it has gone up, you have no idea if it's gone up in step with inflation. All of this culminates in an increasing uncertainty and unease about what the future will bring. The reason that many feel this way is that most Australians have little control over their retirement planning or their super. In this video, I'm going to confirm something many Aussies have thought for a long time. I'm going to show you something which, if you scratch beneath the surface, shows that our super system is broken. We're going to take a look at what we're being told is how much we need in super to live well in retirement. And then I'm going to break it down to try and get closer to the truth. I also conducted a poll which proves 96% of you are wrong in terms of guessing how much you're supposed to need in retirement to live a modest lifestyle according to what we're being told. The premise of this video is to show you that the narrative of what we're being led to believe about super is wrong, at least in some ways. Now, after all that, I'm not saying we should just ditch super. This channel isn't about giving financial advice anyway. On the contrary, super is a great concept. However, based on what I see in my business is that it's not working. I've been looking at people's balance sheets for 15 years and I can tell you it's not helping people get to retirement in a financially secure way. For me to show you what is wrong here, I need to take you through what we're being told. But before we go through all that, I'm gonna prove my point to you right now. The super guarantee, the amount your employer pays to super, has gone from 9.5% in 2019 to what will be 12% in 2025. If it isn't broken, then why do we need to increase it? Many are left really disheartened thinking, hey, I'm paying 33% income tax plus another 12% super plus everything I buy has been taxed already like 10% GST or booze or cigarettes or the list goes on. Anyway, that leads more into how our entire system is not working for ordinary Australians. Let's take a look at what ASFA are telling us we need to retire on comfortably. If you do a Google on how much you need to retire comfortably in Australia, you'll quickly figure out that whatever site you go to will refer to the ASFA retirement standard. ASFA is the Association of Superannuation Funds of Australia. ASFA is a non-profit, non-partisan national organisation whose mission is to continuously improve the superannuation system so all Australians can enjoy a comfortable and dignified retirement. Here's what they say you need on the Money Smart website. They split up between singles and couples and they also split between what is a modest lifestyle and what is a comfortable lifestyle, which makes sense. For a couple on a modest lifestyle, they need an income of 47k and for a single they need an income of 33,000. For a comfortable lifestyle a couple need an income of 72k and a single needs 51k. For me these figures kind of make sense generally the older you are the less you spend and we have to remember this is assuming there's no debt at retirement. Maybe 33,000 for a single feels a little bit low but in general I think they're reasonable. As I was looking through this for the first time there was one question on my mind. How much do you need to have in your super to achieve these figures? And that's where things don't add up. For a couple to retire comfortable at age 67 they need 690,000 and a single needs 575,000. For both a couple and a single to achieve a modest retirement, they only need $100,000 in their super at age 67. Here's what we're being told from ASFA in November 2023. Currently around 30% of couples and singles either reach or exceed the ASFA comfortable standard and by the year 2050, as for projections indicate that around 50% of retiree households will be able to afford expenditure at the level of as for comfortable or above. When you first hear that 100,000 figure, you get this gut feeling that this cannot be right. I mean, 100K in the kitty is a bit of a joke. So I put out a poll to see what other people think and what I realized by the results is that I'm not crazy. Only 4% 
think they need below 150k to live a modest lifestyle. That figure may also be overinflated as I put the link to the answer in the comments. As for calculating this, making the assumption that part of your income will include a government pension. 2050 is in 26 years time. They are totally ignoring the fact that if you go back 26 years in the past, the age pension got you a lot more bang for your buck. A pension is poverty now and to say you'll have a modest life with 100k in your super just feels wrong. I'm happy for people to show me why I'm wrong by the way, just leave a comment below. As for also make the assumption that people are going to live to 85. Based on technology advancing faster than ever before, I feel like there's a bit of guesswork here as well. The models break if you live an extra 10 years and you're still active because all your super's gone. This gets down to a core issue. All of these models we get given are just guesses. All economic models are wrong because economics is based on human behavior and humans react to what's happening in the present. This includes environmental models or green energy models. I'm not saying we shouldn't have these models, by the way. They are our best guesses. The problem is that we get sold a narrative and I'm making the claim that saying 50% of Australians will be comfortable in retirement at year 2050 just encourages people not to think about their financial future because the government is looking after them. This is problematic because it doesn't teach people they need to be productive. When politicians sell their policies to the public, they don't tell us their models are just guesses. They're kind of selling them as facts. I'm gonna to come to my point a bit, but just stick with me here. I think most people would agree now that the politicians and the media made mistakes in COVID. There were some really bad mistakes made, especially down here in Melbourne. How many politicians have put their hands up and said, we made some decisions and some of those decisions were the wrong ones. None, because they only have facts built off their information, which are models, which is guesswork. They will never admit they're guessing. What I'm all about is acknowledging that relying on government for your financial future is a risky bet. We all individually need to figure out a way because no one's coming to the rescue. Let me know what you think in the comments.